About just over a week ago, the channel CyberMath, who uploads interesting videos on mathematics, solved this radical equation here. And I saw that video and I thought to myself that how can we spice it up, like introducing infinitely nested radicals instead, which gives quite an interesting result. And because it's a video on my channel, I've got to be integrating something, right? So I'm going to be integrating this infinitely nested square root function. First up, I'd like to take a shot at solving this equation here, which can be solved pretty easily once you deconstruct the left-hand side. Now, on the left-hand side, you have something to the one-half power, and you have an x here. This x is being multiplied by something else in the square root, and inside that square root, you have x times the square root of x, which is x to the one-half again. So all of this equals x to the x to the one half. So just using the laws of uh, laws of exponents on the left hand side, that should give me now x is being acted upon. This x here is being acted upon by one exponent. So okay, cool. This x is being affected by two exponents. So x to the one half multiplied by one half times this x here, which is experiencing the weight of three exponents. So one half times one half times one half. And this equals x to the x to the one half. Now, this implies that you have x to the one half. And once again, using the laws of uh, uh, the laws of the exponents, we have one half, we have the same basis. So we can just add up the exponents, right? So we have one half plus one fourth, plus uh, one by eight. And this equals x to the x to the one half. So performing the arithmetic on the left hand side should give you x to the seven by eight. And this equals x to the, um, you know what, just write it at the square root of x. Why not just write it as the square root of x again. So now I can use logarithms to solve this exponential equation. So you have the logarithm of x to the seven by eight equal to the logarithm of x to the square root of x. So you have, again, using the laws of the logarithm this time, 7 by 8 times the natural log of x equal to the square root of x times the natural log of x. Now, transferring this to the left-hand side, you can factor out a natural log of x term, and you're left with 7 by 8 minus the square root of x being equal to 0. Now, this implies that the natural log of x could be 0 or the square root of x could be 7 by 8. So we see that there are two solutions here. If the natural log of something is 0, that something is 1. And taking the square of, taking squares for this equation, you get x equals 49 by 64, which agrees with both solutions that CyberMath got. Okay, now for the interesting stuff. For the case of an infinitely nested radical on the left-hand side, let's do an analysis of the case where we had three nested radicals. So in that case, we see that when we broke down the left-hand side of the equation, we had a number of x's, three in this case, which will translate to infinitely many x's being multiplied in this case that we have. So we had three x's, and each x was raised to um, some exponent, right? Now let's work out this exponent. For the first x term, it was one by two. For the second x term, it was 1 by 2 squared. For the third x term, it was 1 by 2 cubed, right? So for the fourth x term, it's going to be 1 by 2 to the fourth power, and so on and so forth. So if you deconstruct the left-hand side of this equation, it will imply that x to the 1 half, and when you multiply everything, then because of the same basis, the exponents will just add up. So the x on the left-hand side is raised to this exponent. So we have an infinite series as an exponent of the x term on the left-hand side. And this infinite series is quite familiar. Indeed, it's a geometric series. It's a geometric series with the first term being 1 by 2. And we know the formula for this. All we do is take the first term 
and divided by 1 minus the common ratio and this works only in the case when the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1 which in this case it is it's 1 by 2 so this means that you have 1 by 2 divided by 1 by 2 which is 1 so yeah that's pretty interesting that's pretty cool so that means you can replace all of this by just a 1 and let me just move this term closer so you see that the equation you have is actually pretty hospitable it's quite a friendly equation so you have x equal to x to the square root of x and you can solve it once again using logarithms right so the logarithm on both sides we get um, on the right it will be the square root of x times the natural log of x equal to the natural log of x so this implies that the natural log of x times 1 minus the square root of x equals 0, which implies that the natural log of x equals 0 or the square root of x equals 1. And both these equations imply that x equals 1. So the case for the infinitely nested radical has only one solution. The discussion we've had so far has a very interesting consequence to the case of the integral of the of this infinitely nested function of x. Now you know that the integrand the integrand evaluated to x to the one, right? So you're just integrating x with respect to x. So the answer is x squared by two plus the constant of integration. So yeah, that was um I wouldn't say it's as fun as the stuff that we normally do on the channel, but yeah, this was pretty interesting, especially the consequences for the infinitely nested cases. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.